Great. Thanks, Brad. So now I'm going to provide a little bit of a deeper insight into extract raw and some of its important properties. And then I'm going to provide our main contribution in the paper, um, an algorithm that we call extract right child, which should sound a little familiar from the title. So first off, um, extract raw runtime, um, extract raw is lower bounded by n squared log n. Um, we know this because it's at least as hard as computing the homology of kind of these, these recursive smaller sub complexes that keep getting fed into it. Um, and we know that computing the homology of something has the same lower bound as matrix multiplication, which is omega of n squared log n. Um, furthermore, extract raw has a few other really important properties. So first of all, it is consistent with the data, the function values on all the vertices. If we kind of carry for every simplex, um, kind of carry with it the function value of its largest valued component vertex, um, we produce a gradient vector field consistent with that that reflects that. And then also importantly, if we actually look at this on the Hasse diagram, um, we have every single matching as an output of extract raw is according to these lexicographical orderings on the Hasse diagram between sort of the smallest valued parent nodes and then their largest valued lexicographically valued child nodes. So maybe to help visualize this, if our simplacial complex is just this little cycle here, and here's its corresponding Hasse diagram, every single match that extract raw is gonna produce um, is gonna between, be between sort of the smallest possible lexicographically valued parent node, um, and then its largest lexicographically valued child node. So if we were thinking of this as being ordered from left to right, our smallest leftmost parent is always gonna be paired with its largest rightmost possible child. Um, and every single arrow in this gradient vector field is gonna have actually this property. Um, so knowing this, we can just go in and design an algorithm that exploits this property instead of using all of these expensive lower link calls. Um, so the first thing we can do then is do something that we call Hasse decoration, which is just going in and storing um, kind of the, the function value of the largest component vertex for every simplex. So that function value that's always gonna be kind of carried up with any higher degree simplex. And then any simplex is rightmost child and also it's leftmost parent. Um, and then we're just gonna conduct matchings the exact way that they're done in extract raw. So the smallest leftmost lexicographically valued parent is gonna be the head of an arrow in the gradient vector field. And its largest rightmost child is gonna be the tail of an arrow. And then all of our leftovers are just gonna be called critical. So for an example here, this is our um, simplacial complex on the left, this cat shaped thing. And then on the right, we have our Hasse diagram. All of our matchings are gonna occur sort of after we've enumerated all of this, every node with um, this important data, we're just gonna go through from the highest dimension down and say, okay, what's the rightmost child of everything? So three, four, six, what's its rightmost child? It's four, six. And then also what's the leftmost parent of four, six? Well, it's three, four, six. What's its smallest lexicographically valued thing based off of F naught? Um, <clears throat> and so then we have a matching and we know that four, six is gonna be the tail of an arrow in the gradient vector field and three, four, six is gonna be the head. And sort of equivalently what's going on on the simplacial complex, well, we're just gonna have an arrow from four, six going into three, four, six into that two simplex there. And then moving along two, five, seven, we're gonna be matched um, there with five, seven, and we're gonna add an arrow on the simplacial complex here. Then we're gonna go down a dimension. So three, four is gonna be paired with its rightmost child four. One, five is gonna be paired with its rightmost child five. And then we're gonna hit two, five, which is sort of our first danger zone area. So two, five is gonna to try to be paired with five, its rightmost child, but we're gonna check um, is two, five the leftmost parent of five? It's not, it's not the smallest lexicographically valued um, parent of five in the Hasse diagram. So we have to call it critical. Then one six is gonna be matched with six, where six is a tail and one six is a head of an arrow. Um, three six we have to call critical because it's not the leftmost parent of six. Four six has already been called a tail so we can skip it. Two seven um, is gonna be the head of an arrow and it's gonna be matched with seven. Four seven we have to call critical because it's not the leftmost parent of seven here and then five seven is also gonna be a tail. And then last but not least, once we get to the vertices, everything that kind of hasn't been claimed yet as a tail, um, we just call critical. So one, two, and three are all gonna be called critical in this case. And then um, for an idea of the runtime, this Hasse decoration step occurs in big O of dn time, 
using O of n space, where D is the dimension of the Hasse diagram and O is the total, and N is the total number of simplices um, in the Hasse diagram, every node. And then all of the matches are just gonna occur in constant time operations since we've stored all of that da data um, kind of initially. So it's gonna run in big O of dn time with on space. And you'll recall from before that this is gonna be a nice time complexity improvement on extract raw, which we show is lower bounded by um, omega of n squared log n. So in conclusion, um, if we're given sort of this pre-existing point data on a simplacial complex um, and we want some function also on that that's consistent with that data that, that's reflective also of its topology. Um, we're not gonna be able to get something exact necessarily. Um, computing a perfect gradient vector field is an NP hard problem, but there are ways to come close. And remember we can do this um, sort of using a gradient vector field. This is an equivalent definition to a discrete Morse function. And it's also an equivalent thing to look at everything through the Hasse diagram. And so if we do look at things through the Hasse diagram, sort of these previous important algorithms have an underlying property that they're using based off of lexicographical orderings. And exploiting this property gives us some really nice time complexity improvements. So this is our main result. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed our contribution.